Welcome back to our health video series here at MyMetro Medicine. I'm Justin Flinner, and in this video, I'm gonna take you through the eight pieces of brocade Qigong set. This is a very old, a very special, and a very effective Qigong routine. It began way back in history with a person named General Yue Fei, who trained his soldiers and tried to keep them strong in the battles that they were fighting. For us, right now, we have the coronavirus pandemic. And in fact, this form is so effective that at the beginning of the pandemic, it was found that many of the doctors and nurses and hospital workers were practicing this form to keep their health strong. So we're not soldiers and hopefully uh, we're not in the same position we were at the beginning of the pandemic, but we can still use this form to keep ourselves physically strong as well as our immune systems intact. So let's get started. This form consists of eight movements and we'll be moving through one by one I will teach you how to perform them and then we'll put them all together into one full set. So let's begin with the first movement. The first movement in the eight pieces of brocade set is two hands holding up the heavens or separating the heavens. Very simple action. All that we do is we bring our hands in front of our lower abdomen and we raise them up in front of us. But as we do that, we're going to be interlacing our fingers and then we're going to come up to the chest, rotate and push to the ceiling. When we reach all the way, full extension, we open the hands apart, let the arms descend and back to the middle and we repeat, inhaling on the way up. Here you can begin to exhale, back down. That's our first movement. Let's go on to the second one. The second movement is called drawing the bow to shoot the eagle or drawing the bow to shoot the hawk. So this action opens up the chest, extends the arms, and you can also drop your legs down a little bit so that you can work your thighs a little bit more in your glutes. So with this action, we have an arm movement that's going to eventually finish when we do this movement, the previous one, number one. We're going to bring the hands in, one, and then the front hand is going to go out to the side, pushing, and the left hand is going to make a fist right in front of you near the chest. But you notice my right hand is doing something interesting here. It looks like this. So my hand goes from this position, I curl down my last three fingers, pull my thumb in and leave my index finger extended. This is a common position in Chinese martial arts, but also in many Qigong forms. So from here out to the side, left hand or opposite hand is going to be in the fist position. When we finish one, we do the other side. We come back down, lift up. The other hand is now in front, making a fist and pushing to the side. As you push, you want to look to that hand and then back to the middle. And in. Remember the name, drawing a bow. So pull the arm back and extend the front arm like you are actually drawing a bow. Down and push. Okay, this is number two. Let's go on to movement number three. Movement number three, separating heaven and earth. This movement is very simple. We have one hand raising up towards the heaven, towards the ceiling, other hand pushing down towards the earth, towards the ground. It looks like this. One, breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, Breathing out, full extension upwards and downwards. Breathing in, breathing out. And back to the center. And we're finished with number three. Let's go to number four. In movement number four, this one is called a wise owl gazing backwards, or just simply looking back. There's two different actions that I have practiced in the past. One of them I prefer over the other, 
First, I'll show you the easier one. Simply put your hands on your hips or you can rest your arms down, it's up to you. And we're gonna be turning from side to side. As you turn, you wanna do this as smoothly as possible and coordinate your breathing. So we exhale as we turn and we continue looking behind us as far as possible, even if our head stops here. And then we turn back, inhaling, exhaling, looking back, inhaling, exhaling, and come back. So the name of the movement, again, is wise owl gazes backwards or just simply looking back. If you think of an owl trying to look behind and turning his head all the way, then you should be attempting to do the same thing with don't hurt your head, don't hurt your neck. Just turn as far as you can, but continue moving the eyes back. And try to avoid the eyes jumping as well. All of the parts of the movement should be very smooth. The second version of this action involves the arms. We still have the rotation with the head. I prefer this one because I get a little bit more stretch and I'll tell you why. So with the arms, we can keep them in this position down at our sides. If I'm gonna to turn to my right, which is this direction, I'm going to exhale and I'm going to open my arms and point my thumbs back behind me. Then I come back to the front. I'm going to exhale, turn the other side. Inhale, come back. And I'm going to repeat this. Now, what I notice each time I do this is when I turn, I can feel a stretch all the way down the shoulder, the arm, into my fingers, and also into the opposite side of my neck. So for me, I prefer this one because of the stretch is increased when I perform it. And I get more mobility afterwards. So it's two birds with one stone. Opinion. That's movement four. Let's try number five. Movement number five. This is called swaying the head and shaking the tail. Okay, a little bit of wagging, but not too much. Don't get too creative on me here. This set or this movement within the set involves a lower stance. And as we do that, it's not important of the depth. However, if you're practiced in martial arts and you're familiar with a horse stance, you can utilize that position. If you want to do a high position, that's okay as well. It's not working the legs specifically. It's incorporating the twisting motion that I'm going to demonstrate here in just a moment. So for me, I'm going to sit down a little bit lower. And for you, you can do that or stay a little bit higher. Arms in this position with your hands resting on the inside of your thighs. And there's a reason for this. What I'm gonna do is twist from side to side like many of the other movements have done. And I'm gonna bring my shoulder down towards my opposite knee. And I'm gonna to twist to look up and back behind me. So as I do that, what could happen is my knee could fall inward like this. With my hand here, from the, pit, from the beginning position, I'm gonna push. Pushing from here, twisting, bringing my shoulder down, twisting to look up and back. Come back to the front and repeat. Push, come back. With the breath, we're gonna exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale. And that is movement number five. Let's move on to movement number six. This action is called two hands hold the feet to strengthen the kidneys and the waist. It's a large movement, meaning there's a lot of action reaching, bending forward. So as you perform this one, I want you to be careful with how far down you go towards the floor. And if you need to bend your knees and just go part of the way down. You understand what I mean when I demonstrate it. So let's try it together. The first part of the movement, obviously we're coming in from the previous movement. You're probably gonna have your hands coming down doing something like this. So as they come down, they're gonna reach right here. And then we're gonna rotate, pull them back, 
And as I mentioned, we're going to be going down near the region of the kidneys and the waist. So your palms are going to touch your back and slide down across the buttocks and down the legs to the feet. Like you're holding the feet, but then we're going to continue out and lift up and repeat. We're going to come down. We're going to bring them in, touch the back, down the backs of the legs, the tops of the feet, out and lift. Here we can do an exhale. If you need another inhale, this is where you would do it. And then exhale all the way down. Inhale all the way up and repeat. That is number six. Let's go to number seven. Movement number seven is called clench the fists and gaze fiercely or strongly. This one requires you to get a little bit tense. Now, remember I said earlier, this is a form that was frequently used for soldiers to help maintain health and also prepare them for battle. So you're not preparing for battle, but you are trying to maintain your health. So as you do this, you need to be able to, we're going to be punching. So as we go forward, you need to tense up a little bit with your punch, with your arm, and then we're going to release. You're not going to hold on to it forever, but we will be alternating sides. So let's get our feet apart, kind of like we did with one of our previous movements in that horse stance position. Your hands pulling into your sides one hand punching out and then as we get to this position we're going to open the palm turn the arm roll to make a fist again and pull back other side we punch out again remember we're getting a little tense as we do this holding on squeezing tight and then open the hand turn roll and pull back. Other side again, one more time. Punch, getting tense, squeezing, open, turn, roll, and pull back. One more punch, getting tense, open, turn, roll, pull back. Nice job. We've come to movement number eight, the last one in the form. This is called bouncing on the toes or vibrating the back. A little bit of both. Interesting names, but you'll get the picture here. This one you can either do with your arms hanging down, that's fine, or we can do with the movement that contains the arms. For right now, let's try it first with the arms hanging down. All you do is come up onto the balls of the feet slowly and then you're gonna relax and let yourself fall back down and allow your heels to make contact with the floor. Obviously, we feel the vibration and there's a little bit of bounce here. So we come up and down, up and down, up and down. The next one with the arms, you can do it this way instead, raising the arms up and then let them come down with the rest of your body. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. One more time. Inhale and exhale. That's movement number eight. Let's try the whole form. Here we go. Okay. We're done with all eight movements. It's time to put them together. We're going to do it in two different ways. The first way is we're going to do each movement one time on each side. The second way we're going to do it is going to take a lot more time. We're going to do each movement eight times. Allows for a nice longer practice and you get to practice each movement multiple times so you get good at it. Let's start with the shorter version. Bring your feet in about shoulder width, knees a little soft, nice good posture. Bring the hands to the front. The palms should be facing your lower dantian or the lower abdomen. Take a few deep breaths here.
when you feel a little bit relaxed and connected to that area and stable, then we can begin the first action, bringing the hands in, one, inhale, look up and exhale, separate the arms and down. Next action, stepping out with the right foot, pulling the hand across, pushing out the opposite hand, and coming back in. Other side, one, and two. Come in, one, two. Inhale. Exhale, down, here we have two versions, we can either do the turning from here, or we can do the turning that I like to do, which is rotate, exhale, and down, other side, exhale, inhale, moving on, Take a step out, bring your hands to your thighs, turning from one side. Inhale, exhale, again, and take a step. Next action, one, we can push out and lift, then we can bring the hands down. One, in, two, and lift, and down. Take another step out, left foot, bring the hands in, sit down a little bit, we're going to punch out to the front with the left hand, tighten up a little bit here, open, turn, roll back to a fist, and pull in. Other side, punch, getting a little tense, open, turn, roll, pull back, Come back, one, Raising the arms up and down. To finish, you can bring the hands back to the front. And you're finished. Good. That's the short version. Now let's try the long version. Here we go. Okay, it's time for the full form. We're going to go for eight movements each time for each action. It's going to take a little bit long, so follow me along. And actually, I'm going to have to cut the video out to do it in two parts, so you'll see it meld together. But just keep following along, and we'll make it through from start to finish. Here we go. Okay. 